stories from A to Z is a cool book that tells the stories of amazing black heroes you might not know about. You'll meet inventors, you'll meet explorers, and leaders who change the world. It's fun, inspiring, and you can learn so much. Get your copy now at hiddenhistorymuseum.com. Let's discover our hidden. <coughs> What's up? <coughs> Damn. Wasn't going to do this, so I figured I had to. It's hot as hell. I almost didn't want to. So I had to turn the air conditioner on. But I've been watching or listening to more of this Tariq Nasheed spaces. I try to get on again. Raise my hand. Did everything to draw attention to myself. Even when he was in between callers saying, let's see who can come on. Raise your hand if you want to go on. He still ignored me. So I'll be going on covertly. See, the one thing I noticed, he, he never dismisses the suspected white supremacists. Those seem to be his main audience members, number one. Two, he looks for them. Three, he dismisses black people. And, and the whole theme of today this should be short, but who knows? Is that <clears throat> aside from being an agent, which I'll give to Harker Bay that he has that part right. Uh, and the other thing that solidified that for me, and I noticed that none of his fans or stands said anything about it, or maybe they didn't because maybe the, the comments got deleted. But he had the new infomercial with his son with the high pitched voice sounding kind of moist and then he had that other androgynous little kid <laughs> mixed of course can't have any Nubian looking uh, kids uh, at least Chew Butter has some Nubian looking uh, kids up there even though they are Caribbean um, but you had that one wearing a shirt a dress like shirt you know no little boys go running around wearing shit like that. And this is the same guy who's always talking about white celebrities keep trying to dress up little... Matter of fact, who the fuck... Who kid, whose kid was that? That's number one. <laughs> was that one of his relatives? I mean, now you got Mark, Marcel Dixon. You got this little kid. You got T.S. Giselle. Tariq, is def, Tariq Nasheed is definitely an Uncle Tom House nigga. He's graduated to that. And what else supports that is you look at his thumbnails that he has for the Africans. It's every stereo. That's the other thing, too. It's every stereotype that went against us. He's always mean and nasty to him and talking about, oh, I don't mean that. I'm not trying to disparage anybody. I'm down with the writers. But if you ain't a writer, you're a nigger. It's just like when white people say, you know, not all black people are niggers. Just, you know, I don't like the niggers. I, 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 you know, black people I love, but I don't like niggers. Black people are Uncle Toms that obey the white man and don't give them any problems. Niggers are the ones <laughs> who aren't kissing their asses. And they can't be controlled. That's why they don't like niggers. But like I always say, if you call one a nigger, you're calling all a nigger. And Tariq Nasheed <clears throat> is doing more strange things. See, that's why he doesn't want me to come on. But I'm going to come on. I'm going to hit him with one of my other accounts that I'm going to create. I'm going to come on. He always makes time for the white supremacists, but never for the black person who he gives them, uh, is soliciting money from. But these thumbnails flies around the Africans. He's always calling them musty, crusty, dusty, broke, working uh, the typical jobs that immigrants work when they get here. The thumbnails has them with eyes bucking all the time. But you compare and contrast to the ones that he makes about the white people. There's nothing disrespectful about the ones that he makes for the white people. Nothing alarming. Uh, nothing racist. The, the 
strongest words that Tariq Nashi can give to the white people is he'll he'll say, "You're you're giving me cracker babble." But he still has not, not never called white people crackers. But he tries to get slick with cracker babble. It's the way Taharka Bay has to work his way around talking about Tariq Nashi without mentioning his name or showing his face. And I must admit, it's a cool workaround and it's kind of funny. But that's that's the way it works, man. You, you can still mention the guy, but still, I still take issue because I can't believe any court, any judge will order somebody to not talk about somebody who's in the public eye. I, I just can't believe that, but who knows how that shit went. But, um... Yeah, also, yeah, I bought me a uh, portable vacuum cleaner for the car, too. That shit is just strong enough to at least get stuff out of the seats and even on the floor and, and dust the vents and stuff. That It's a cool little device. No bags, either. But... He had one about some Alaskan guy. See, at best, he'll just have the white person look mean, the mean Bethy or Becky or whatever her name was. Have him look mean, but no stereotypes. Nothing disparaging, nothing that makes them look like undesirable people, even though these people are saying undesirable things. Now, I would go out on a limb and say that a lot of the Africans that talk shit about Tariq Nasheed are doing it in response to what he's been saying about them. That's what I'm going to assume. Uh-huh. <laughs> I was just looking because two cars going out at the same time. One likes to not use the appropriate way to go out. And they were about to go out and come in at the same uh, spot. But one thought about it. So anyway. Oh, another thing too. Had to order me some clay bars to clean up this car. Because apparently I got the pads and stuff. I guess I don't know how to use this shit properly. But, but they say you got to use these clay bars in order to... Uh, I bought a synthetic one. A whole bunch of them to get your car right and then wax it and then I'm gonna wax it with the uh, ceramic see how that works because uh, still has the luster of course but just not especially on the hood area gotta get it right and ceramic's supposed to last for quite a while so we'll see what happens when that gets here that's the other thing you gotta order shit online man you can't even go to a local store and if you they do happen to have it in a local store it probably costs you 10 times as much as it costs online might as well wait so Tariq Nashi he's an uncle he's a certified Uncle Tom he's a certified agent he's endorsing the LBGTQ lifestyle and the agendas that uh agents are ordered to endorse you know they endorse they can endorse it in different ways they can endorse it by saying what's wrong with being gay what's, why, why you got a problem with it they ain't hurting you or I ain't with that either way but yet every time you turn around he happens to be uh, conversing with some of them even uh, Marcel on one of the recordings I was talking, uh, uh, listening to, he just said, I used to be uh, involved with a half black, uh, half Puerto Rican guy. If I want to hear that shit. He's talking about the guy uh, was talking about black people. I'm like, man, nobody want to hear what the fuck you were doing. Tariq does, though. So... I don't even know. I don't even remember the history of how Tariq Nashi got introduced to this Marcel Dixon. I don't remember that. 
All I know is he just started endorsing the guy because he claimed that he was about reparations. People like me, we told you way back in the day, no candidate for any office is going to win a campaign based on arguing for reparations. Because that will fend others and won't attract enough of who you need in order to win. Besides that, a lot of these elections are fixed anyway. You know, you got to be in these secret societies. That's why I told you I was involved in politics and I was observing everything all around. And of course, I didn't get a one dime out of the successes that I had, which let me know what the fuck the deal was. But people who didn't even do the shit that I was doing, which I was the main guy, just not in name, but yet I was the main guy on the fucking ground and the orchestrator of the fucking campaign. I didn't get no fucking credit. All I got left is a moral victory, which was an actual victory in the fucking campaign literature that fucking uh, designed and distributed and gave out my strategies, which were atypical strategies, marketing strategies instead of uh, political strategies. And it's a rich man's game. And I saw how the poll workers get paid to work the polls. It doesn't take much, especially these old people. Old people, I, I think that's the biggest excitement they can have in their lives. <laughs> Shit, I get old. Fuck that, I'm traveling the motherfucking world. Fuck all this laid back bullshit. Fuck that. Fuck you want to lay back, travel the world, even though they're making it difficult to do that shit. But, um, you know, so Tariq Nasheed is obviously, so that's the thing, Tahar Bay, I'll give him that. At least he knows that he's not dumb enough to know that these people are not paid coons for, uh, you could say Trump or the Democrats. Again, if you remember last time, last election, Tariq Nashi was stumping for Trump. Then he lost, and then he he wasn't really concerned with that shit. He was critiquing Trump, even. That means that their business had ended, and then they said, you know what? We got to these coons on the internet too late the last time. So now let's get them early into the whole Biden regime and then this way we can better prepare for the next time. And that's what they did. And that's why <clears throat> after Biden got placed into office, you know, the people like Tariq Nasheed and the Pan-Africanism Strikes Back and all these other people, they weren't really uh, stumping for Trump like that. And then they contacted them and said, let's do this shit early. And then all of a sudden, it was the hell with Biden and Democrats. Basically, all they're doing is repeating the script that you hear on um, conservative talk radio. You know, it's the same old shit. Uh, same script handed to them by the same people. Matter of fact, I'm in the car. Let's see what these motherfuckers are saying right now. Let's see. I forget the name of the station. 710 770. Let's see, the same old shit. Joe Biden ain't getting out of the race. See, that's another thing, too. <clears throat> Kennedy supposedly got his head blown off because people were not satisfied with the way he was running the country. But Biden is a half alive individual. I guess as long as he says does what they tell him to do, they'll keep propping him up. But both candidates are uh, backed by the powers that be any goddamn way. So, like I always say, it should never come down to two old timers, elderly guys. I mean, it's not guys that's sixty. 
you had a guy like Obama. I don't want to say he was dumb because he definitely wasn't dumb. But you could definitely argue that when he took office, he wasn't, I don't want to say mature enough, but you know, he didn't have leadership qualities. He had good speeches that they hyped him up on to prepare your mind for him so you could be brainwashed. By the time he was done, he didn't have any good speeches anymore. <laughs> or they didn't hype him up to having any good speeches. So now they're telling you that Biden is a, a, a half alive individual and Trump is a mean guy. <laughs> You mean to tell me out of all these people, the only people they can get to run for president are some old timers and some fucking foreigners? Is that what you're telling me? Guys who, no matter how much energy Trump has, even Trump could drop dead right now or during a term. Either one of them can. Even though it's clear that these people, they got the secrets to extending life, which I think that's probably, I swear to you, I think that's why George Lucas put that shit in the uh, Revenge of the Sith. Because you know all these uh, elites, they seem to live a lot longer than most. That's why I'm looking at the so-called royal family with their cancer diagnoses, little side eye. Because people like me, we always make it saying... None of these people seem to die from cancer, diabetes, and shit like that. Not even heart attacks. It's just being old. And then your body giving up from old age because it already did what it had to do. So, hey, by the way, I, I picked up a package from Amazon. So I don't fuck with Amazon Prime, man. They keep wanting to give you Amazon Prime. I got it for a week. Order shit. They say it's coming the next day. You're getting ready for it. And then the next thing you know, it's coming in two two days. Then when that other two days comes, oh, it's coming tomorrow. I had to reorder the Michael Max movie and shit. Because they raised the motherfucking price. Had a crack on it. I'm, seeing, I'm looking at reviews. I'm seeing that that's a trend with the crack on it. Now, I did get a little sneak preview of it while I was playing the shit sometimes you know when you play a 4k from blu-ray sometimes you don't immediately notice the difference other times the differences are pretty clear cut the Malcolm X it always looked good looked good on DVD blu-ray TV (laughs) and 4k I see some improvements but it didn't seem to be drastic but there was there was a crack in the shit so I had to return that shit. Then they raised the price. So I ended up spending more to get a fucking exchange, but they didn't want to do an even exchange for some goddamn reason. They want me to get something else. So Amazon Prime, man, fuck that. I don't even fuck with that. I told them why I canceled the shit and they I mean this is it's just fucked up. There's no point in having it. But anyway. Tariq Nasheed is an Uncle Tom house nigger. And I'm going to tell him about himself once I get on. We'll see how long he keeps me on. Uh, I know what to do. I think I'm going to take Tyron's advice. Because that's those are apparently the only people he lets on. So, uh, Again, with all the black people, even the ones he's supposed to be tight with, like Marcel Dixon... He only lets them come on and speak for a little bit. But the white supremacists, you know, when they got dead air, he'll keep on saying, hey, you got anything else to say? Say something. Come on. I admit Taharka Bay did make a good point when he said that um, Jason Black... (laughs) Is supposed to be fighting for rep. I think he's he's right on that. That these people are frauds, because I've been saying that shit too. 
what they're doing is not going to be a reparations fight. Now, other parts of uh, target based criticism makes me think that he doesn't want reparations because, like I said, if all these fringe groups, if, if we all get reparations in these fringe groups, they're all out of business because there's no longer a need for them. So that's why they don't want reparations because then they can't do what they do anymore. But if we get reparations and, and if they are black Americans, then they will get paid. So shit. But see, there, there could be no more the white man this, the white man that join my crew. But Tarka Bay, what did he say? He said, um, Jason Black is supposed to be fighting for lineage based reparations, but he doesn't even, we don't know his lineage. And I swear, I believe that that picture that uh, was floating around that Judge Joe Brown claimed was him. Others were quick to bite it and, and say that that was him. But I'm sticking to my same picture that I've been showing for a few reasons. Number one, that picture looks like a Somali. That's number one. Number two, we didn't get any proof that that was him. And Judge Joe Brown is not, not somebody I'm, I'm believing. Who's Judge Joe Brown? He's just Dick Gregory's replacement. The conspirator, brainwashing uh, Negro. Well, pseudo-Negro. Again, with this Freemasonry, I'm putting the pieces together. Because why does Freemasonry attract Negroes, but it attacks Negroes, namely black Americans. If you notice, the main Freemasons that are black seem to be of Caribbean heritage, not even Africans, Caribbean. And not even any Caribbean, but British Caribbean. What can that mean? Now, if you follow history like I do, objectively, you could come up with the conclusion that the United States got created by Freemasons and it was broken away from the British Empire to create a Freemason country. Then, you got Prince Hall Masons, Barbados, and the other Caribbeans. Now, you can argue black Caribbeans, uh, I mean black Europeans, which is why uh, the British are always so tight with these Caribbeans. Because if you notice, they don't necessarily hate them, and they invited a lot of them back to the UK. But the white man always makes sure that these British Caribbeans impersonate us and always uh, get put into places that where they purport to be us and then they try to lead us off a cliff. Like Marcus Garvey, lead us, take us to Africa. Umar Johnson, same thing, get, get your ass to Africa. Everybody else you can think of. Get to Africa. But they don't go. I should tell you a whole lot. But the British connection, York Wright Masonry, British, is clearly to try to get us back into the British fold. But we must be a very special people. I was also listening to the Tariq Ryan Garcia. Matter of fact, that was the show, the last show I was holding on for. And I can't help but notice that Tariq Nasheed continues to assert that he calls Latinos white Latinos. Ryan Garcia is about my complexion. If at best a shade lighter. Am I a white black American? Of course not. So, 
when someone keeps repeating and, and, and these minions, these brain dead idiots that listen to Tariq Nashi, they can't think for themselves. They repeat it too. Yeah, white Hispanics, white Latinos. You fucking idiots. That's brainwashing. Because why would you keep asserting the word white instead of just calling them Latinos? And they're not all the same. When I'm on these other channels and they're talking about uh, Latinos and hip hop, I hate when people keep thinking that Mexicans and Puerto Ricans are the same people. They're not the same people. Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, and Cubans have almost nothing in common with Puerto Ricans except speaking Spanish and being mixed. But they're not mixed with the same thing because they don't have the Mongol mixture. Even when they talk that Taino bullshit, that's not Mongol. I haven't seen artifacts that show Mongol in the Caribbean. I haven't seen it. Maybe somebody can show it to me in case I missed it. They're largely mulattoes who have mixed with mulattoes. Of course, you got some people who are blacker, some people who are whiter. And if you notice, Tariq Nashi would call Latinos white Latinos. But yet, when it comes to his lady, who has a white mother, he says, oh, that's a black woman. Make that make sense. He's following the tenets of white supremacy when he says that. But again, these caricatures uh, on these avatars, thumbnails, these are the types of things that if they were coming from suspected white supremacists, everybody would be up in arms. This is racist. Every time an African speaks, what's your race? What's your lineage? That's like white people asking you, what's your race? What's your nationality? You got to have a particular nationality before you speak. Whatever your nationality is, that depends on how you get treated. Come on. This is what it's like with this Negro. And idiots let them get away with it. Not everybody, but of course the people who talk against it, you know, he tries to cut them short. Um, just look at his thumbnails, look at the way he talks to these people. It's clear that he is either told to hate these people or he hates them. But I think he hates them because he's the Uncle Tom. Look at who he married. Look at who he deals with. Look at who his sister married. I mean, that should show you right there. They talk all this pro-black shit. And that's the last person that they want to marry. Just like the rest of these uh, Negroes. All this pro-black shit. And they always go out and find the whitest person they can find. Stand these goddamn pigeons. Uh, <laughs> so they always do that. Go out and find the whitest person they can find and they never want to find the Nubian queen. Only the half white ones go out and find the Nubian person because they want to be accepted as all black. But, you know, this type of shit pisses me off Because now, like I always say, if everybody else is something different from us and we don't get reparations, where does that lead us? Because now we've alienated by delineation ourselves, which kind of puts a target on our backs.
Now, Tariq Nasheed and these Freemasons, he never mentions Freemasons. At least I'll give Tarka Bay that much credit. Even though his uh, Morris Science Temple, that's a Freemason sect. Uh, but at least he, he would throw it in there. But you notice how Tariq Nasheed stays away from that shit. And he's always mentioning Morris for some, for, for some odd reason. This Estebanico the Moor. I looked them up. All I do is see the same old shit that they talk about concerning this individual. But and he always looks like a, a fucking devil. <laughs> Doesn't even look like a human being. And I'm like, where where'd that drawing come from? That doesn't look like a drawing from somebody who took a pose. Why doesn't the motherfucker have any clothes on if he's so skilled? I think he might be fictional. I'll look into it a little more. But if I can't find shit on him, and niggas like Tariq Nasheed had the whole scoop on him, I start questioning things. If there's not one book written about this person, it better be from the 1950s or before. Then I'm going to say it's the fictional character. Because you got a lot to explain it. Now I've seen obviously in some drawings that Spain did bring in some Moors, but we don't, we can't say for sure that they were slaves because a lot of them didn't look like slaves. But they were definitely black. but they could have just been Spaniards. That's the other thing too, Tariq is lying about Spain and Portugal being white supremacists. They were fucking mixed already. Yeah, they were. They had Europe in mind first, not necessarily white, because you know, they weren't really white. You look at the paintings, man, some of those motherfuckers are darker than a motherfucker. You could tell that they were at least half black. <clears throat> And even the kind that you might accept as uh, white still had a tan to them. Looked like your darker Italians that you see around. And that's because they're uh, mixed. Just like this Gladiator too. I don't even know why they made that shit to be honest with you. Kept hearing about that shit for years and years and years. I guess now it's finally coming. Damn near 25 years. Uh, I think it is 25 years after the fact. It was a Gladiator 1999 or 2000. It was spectacular looking back then. I think it still looks uh, pretty decent now. It got that shit on 4K. I ain't watched that shit yet. I just watched the opening scene where they shoot the arrows because that's how you. That's a good scene to test your surround sound on. Especially the Atmos. Because that surround sound is spectacular. But people are making a big deal out of that. Oh, man, how come Denzel Washington's in it? How you going to have a black man in Rome? Goes to show people are ignorant. I had to let these people know those Etruscans were black. And they were in Italy and dominated Italy before the Latins got there. The Latins who became the Romans. And the white supremacists, real ones... They educated me while I was debating them because I used to think that the Italians were your dark haired, dark skinned, John Gotti or darker types, John Turturro types. And then you see in that Gladiator 2, they got the emperors looking crazy because they were sick. They were, they were crazy. They were homosexuals, bisexuals, and mentally ill. That's why... Just like mafia bosses, just, most of them got killed. But they were red-headed, blue-eyed white people, because and it proves that white people, white people definitely come from uh, being mutant albinos, because they all start off red hair or yellow hair, white with blue eyes, polka dot skin or clear skin, depending on how things uh, took place. And only when they mix with black or Mongol Asian, do you get darker hair darker skin, different feature people. And of course, the power dynamics people are going to side with whoever's in power. 
like the Italians used to get discriminated against, the Greeks used to get discriminated against, Romanians, whoever the hell you can think of, used to get discriminated against, until the white man finally realized, you know why I can't piss too many motherfuckers off, so I gotta bring some in on my side, and keep them away from the other side, before you know it, they'll all say, God damn it, I don't like you, let's all get together. So now you got Italians, my complexion, <laughs> uh, some of them looking at me mean and shit. I'm like, man, motherfucker, I know you look in the mirror when you get up and get ready. There ain't no way how you can look up, look in the mirror and say to yourself, I'm a white man. With black eyes, a, a, a tan that won't go away, jet black, shiny hair. If your name wasn't Mario, you look like you came from fucking Arabia or Iran or somewhere. India. And the reason why is because all those people are mixed too, by the way. That's why it's hard for a lot of people to put the uh, pieces of the puzzle together. So anyway, this Gladiator 2 got Denzel in it. And I said, it looks like it could be some indirect tie-in with his Hannibal movie. I don't know if that shit dropped yet. But I didn't even see a scene from it. Just saw a poster of it. So we'll see how that's going to work out. Speaking of Netflix, I did download that Beverly Hills Cop 4. I realized the old school E-Mule still has uh, its value. And your ISP, for some odd reason, they don't uh, detect shit that comes through E-Mule for some reason. Which is cool. So... You got that, Beverly Hills Cop 4. I, I, I started watching about a half hour of it. First thing that occurred, Eddie Murphy doesn't really look that old. He looks what I call aged, but he doesn't look like an old man. I didn't like, they kind of did it the way they did Coming to America 2. We know it's a sequel. We know it's a sequel from decades ago. We don't need a reintroduction to people who were in the old movies and to how Axel probably was. We don't need that. I hate when they do that shit. If it's a sequel, let it be a fucking sequel. Just pick up where the fuck uh, the shit is going next. We don't need a reintroduction. Why else are you going to call it Beverly Hills Cop 4 or Axel F or Coming to America too? Or Gladiator too. I hope they don't do that shit with Glad. I think from the trailer it looked like they were doing it. We don't need that. Just do it. And they use the same old music from Beverly Hills Cop. Which I didn't like. Get new music. It's not the 80s. It's not the 90s. And I forgot when Beverly Hills Cop 3 came out. Maybe that was 2003 or something like that. Stop trying to recreate what was. And just work with what's going on now. The only thing they did that was now, from what I've seen so far, was they threw in an African lady to try and be us. And they want to give you the Hispanic. See, people talk about the Hispanics with the hip-hop shit. Like I've always maintained, no matter what the Hispanic is. Mexican, Puerto Rican, Dominican, they ain't shit without us. Because they have no careers. They have no aura of being cool except for doing the Colombians with the cocaine. That's it. They have to keep putting them in our movies in order to be somebody. You take Fat Joe, Jennifer Lopez, Rosie Perez, Alfonso Ribeiro, Miguel Nunez. And as we just learned from a post I put on Facebook, uh, now, you see, now I forget the man's name. Caesar. I forgot his first name. From a soldier story. That guy. Apparently, he, you know, my man made a name for himself, but my man wasn't in uh, too many movies. He had a relatively short career. Started kind of late. But, uh, damn, I forgot his first name. But you know what I'm talking about, Caesar. 
Cesar. And that, that explains why his last name is Cesar. So they didn't pronounce it Cesar when it should have been Cesar. But they kept calling him Caesar. So that's why we didn't see it. <laughs> now he wouldn't have had a, he's Dominican. He wouldn't have had a career if he didn't play in our movie. Same thing with Miguel Nunez, Alfonso Ribeiro. Fat Joe, if he wasn't partaking in our hip hop and getting down with our people, he wouldn't have had a career. Jennifer Lopez, she wouldn't have had a career. Rosie Perez, she wouldn't have had a career. Lisa Lisa, even though full force of Caribbeans and that's all they helped out were Caribbeans like uh, Lisa Lisa and the Real Roxanne and some other people that were Caribbeans and white people. Notice, I'm being honest with you, I even tell full force this on their uh, Instagram. They don't respond to me, but as long as they hear me, that's good enough. <laughs> they didn't block me yet, so that's good enough. That, but that's all they helped. They didn't help black Americans. But they took our music, and then they helped other Caribbeans. And I keep telling you, Puerto Ricans are Caribbeans. That's why you got to stop listening to niggas like Tariq Nasheed. Because he's talking from his uh, Mexican, California perspective. He doesn't know any goddamn Puerto Ricans. That's why he doesn't really know how to respond to a Derek Cologne. Let me tell you how you respond to a Derek Cologne. You ask Derek Cologne, are you black? That's how you respond to him. And take it from there. That'll... <coughs> you want to you wanna talk about a man shutting the fuck up? That'll shut him up. <laughs> that'll shut him up. And if you don't know what to say after that, whatever the answer he, he, he gives is, I don't know what to tell you. Just like that bad boy, is, that new one. I didn't, I told you I didn't want to go see that shit. Because, number one, the last one was over the top. And it was a Mexican handoff. He had, Will Smith had to have a Mexican son so they can try and pass the torch down to them. You take... How come, how come the white man is not letting these people feed off of them and why is it Mexicans that's why I gotta make it clear to people it's Mexicans it's not Latinos but of the Latinos who still don't want to be black want to leech on to the Latino title because they think oh well whatever perks is coming up I'm getting some but these Puerto Ricans look around look around whatever happened to that comedian the look around look around guys he dead Shit, I looked around. I haven't seen him in a while. But you look around, look around. Puerto Ricans. They're giving the Mexicans the jobs and the perks. Not you. Not you, Dominican. So you better look into that shit. And then when I go on these other YouTubers who keep picking up the debates or whatever the hot topics are. And they keep confusing Puerto Ricans with Mexicans, which is ignorant. You just, you got to stop being ignorant. Visually, they don't look alike. But with all mixed peoples, you're going to come across some people that look similar. Just like uh, with some Africans, you're going to find some Africans that look similar to us. But most of them do not. You're going to find some white people that look similar to white style black people, which are obviously mixed types. So we got a we, we got Mexicans eat tacos and burritos and Mexican food. That's not Puerto Rican. That's not Caribbean food. It, it's not even the bulk of Latin America because only Mexicans eat burritos and tacos and shit. Not people in South America, Central America, as their you know regular food. Puerto Ricans eat the same type of shit that other Caribbeans eat. Rice and beans and, and beef patty type shit, all that kind of shit, plantains. Matter of fact, when I go to BJ's now, they got a fucking, now they got a fucking Goya section now. And matter of fact, when I'm in the Goya section, I'm looking because I'm curious to see if Mexicans uh, uh, buy Goya shit because the Goya shit has always been 
Puerto Rican, Dominican, Caribbean type food. That's why I can't ever recall having seen any Goya, Goya taco mix or burrito mix and shit like that. So that's why I'm just curious to see. See, people confuse them. If they hadn't been sent over here, East Coast, Midwest, South, then there would be no confusion. Well, from the people from the West, it would still be confusion because for ever since I've been alive, they always thought and assumed that their Hispanics were the same as our Hispanics just because they were Hispanic. And they don't realize you're by Mexico and parts of what you had were Mexico, but that's not us. They fail to accept the fact that we, you know, a lot of us are closer to Canada. You know, some of us, you know, might be like Detroit. You can just go right over there. Others of us, you know, might take a few hours drive to get there, but no matter what, we can get there if we want to go. Should I have been there in a while? In a way, I wouldn't mind going back. I haven't been there in a minute. Uh... And I know the Drake and Kendrick Lamar, I think that shit is orchestrated in the BS, but Canada hoods ain't about to go to war with no U.S. hoods. Get out of here with that. And the only Canadian uh, hood that would give you a problem would be Toronto because all the uh, Quebec and all that, Montreal, that's all French shit. They ain't worried about that shit. Toronto's where the Caribbean's at. <laughs> so it is what it is I got the air conditioner on man it's hot like a motherfucker yesterday it was definitely hot you know I think it was 95 or something like that feeling like 101 I just went to uh, wash the car and wa and do the inside it seemed like I only took around 20 minutes. <laughs> I mean, I was dripping. Not, not beating, dripping wet. To the point where I bend over on the seat, I'm dropping sweat down. Not small drops, big drops. To the point I said, damn, I can't even uh, do the seats anymore. But they were clean. Uh, then my clothes. You know, that, that feeling that you hate when your clothes start sticking to you. <laughs> Sit down, then you, your, your pants uh, shift because they, uh, they're sticking to your legs and shit. Shirt sticking to your legs. That's why I leave the air conditioner on. And then when I get back, I come into a cool place. And I hate when you got to peel the clothes off of you. Oh, man, I hate that. <laughs> it's just, phew. But anyway. I just wanted to point out some shit with Tariq Nasheed. Be on the lookout for Rumble. Uh, got my Rumble channel, and I'm going to open up my other Rumble channel. I thought it was connected to the other one. And get, up, get on my Facebook. People wonder where the Rumble links are, the Facebook links. Just go to this YouTube channel. And you know where they got the links for Rumble... Cash App and all that shit. It's all, it's all there. That's the, you know, the main channel page. It's all there. Uh, and lastly, before I go, I see a lot of these auditors videos. People keep wondering where they're going. You know, they demonetize a lot of them to get them out of there. And that's why they slow down. Some of them are still sitting behind bars right now. Which is crazy. But some of them I don't like. When they go to these post offices. Start holding doors open for people. Asking people questions. Everybody who walks by. How you doing? Yeah. Good day. Oh I like that hat. Now, see that shit. That's the harassment. If you want to film. Just record. And let that be that. You don't have to talk to everybody that comes in holding doors and acting like you working there and taking over the goddamn post office. That kind of shit I don't like. Just record. 
and let natural reactions, because you know that's what they're looking for. They ain't looking to teach nobody no fucking lessons. They're looking for engagement, reaction, people getting pissed off, because that's that's where the action comes from, and that's why I watch. And if there's no action, there ain't nothing to see. Just like the uh, uh, the other video genre that they uh, YouTube seems to have uh, taken away for some reason is the uh, Hebrew Israelite videos. Now, instead of watching the ones I used to watch, I got to watch some uh, new ones, new people. And you're really looking for the action, the engagement. So YouTube, they're always fucking up videos, man, trying to turn everything corporate. And then they want you to pay for the shit because that's what they decide to do. Fuck all that. And people keep saying Anybody who says that they want to get their own video uh, website so they need donations, they're lying. Because it's going to take quite a bit of investment to get your own servers going. Because it ain't going to be like a couple of home servers. You're going to have to spend tons on RAM and especially on hard drive. You think about the you gotta have at least a billion YouTube accounts worldwide. Think of all the videos that go on there. And then you got specialists, programmers, and everybody else else that's on there to create their own special uh algorithms and, and, and software. And I think that's part of the reason why Rumble doesn't have anything specialized to them. It's just basic shit. That's why it's taking me 59 years to put the shit on because they don't make it easy. <laughs> I mean, doesn't matter how powerful my shit is, is the fact that their shit isn't that powerful. That's the problem. But if you've, you know, been on YouTube over the years, you've seen how they uh, upgraded over the years. You know, they went from uh, your cell phone style 320. <laughs> Then 480p, then uh, your digitals, then your HD, and longer than 15 minutes, all that kind of shit. But it seems right now, YouTube is on a mission to get rid of everybody. Like other people have been saying, including myself. So it's like, I hear some people say, my father was watching video where Sonetta was saying he wanted to keep his videos up and pass that shit down to his uh, people. You know, most people want their videos on YouTube to stay so people can hear them in the future. But YouTube doesn't play like that. They just want you out of here for whatever reason. So that's why I haven't really been posting too much. And like I said, once I get around 500 followers on Rumble, then I'll try to go live on Rumble. Now, technically, I could go live on YouTube, but I want to try and transition to Rumble because... I'm fed up with YouTube. I'm tired of playing these, these fucking games. And everybody else is fed up. Now the people who are uh, monetized, those people are not fed up yet because the money is coming through. People who are not monetized, they're, they're the ones who are getting fed up. That's why those auditors stay on. Some of those auditors haven't been on in months because the money has gone. And those auditors, they're making pretty good money. And there's some petitions and shit to get them off of YouTube. But if you've been following YouTube from the beginning, there have been video genres <laughs> that have been exciting to watch. Some could be ethical or unethical, depending on how you want to look at it. But they were exciting. And for one reason or another, YouTube took them down and banned them off from YouTube. Now, somebody could have a video channel and allow that kind of shit to get back on. We, you know, we can have something exciting. Anyway, motherfuckers, don't look at where they're going in a fucking parking garage. It's, it's amazing. Very amazing. Um... But yeah... 
Tariq Nasheed is the Uncle Tom house nigga, and there ain't no doubt about that. Uh... And I must say that what he's doing with that little kid with that dress, it's a shirt that looks like a dress, and it's an androgynous little kid <laughs> with the hair, the voice. I'm going to play the clip. Put that shit in the, in, in the front of the video. I'm sure you've already seen it. But I'm like, how come nobody's questioning this shit? Now you're dealing with little kids now. This is the same guy who says that they're coming for your kids. They're trying to make your kids moist. The celebrities adopt black children and put them in dresses. Where'd you get that kid from, Tariq? Is that one of your uh, nieces and nephews? Or don't ask, don't tell? <laughs> is that Yvette Carnell's child? I mean, who, who, whose kid is that? And where did you get that shirt, dress shirt from? Because it looks like a dress. Where would you get this shit from? He doesn't want to say. We'll see if he brings that shit up. You know, it's funny. Long you stay Well, maybe it is long you stay here, motherfuckers come. <laughs> I'm, I'm about to get out. Uh, uh, wasting gas premium gas on this air conditioning even though it feels good but still how did the motherfucker out here so uh, that's a curious thing to be bringing that little moist kid and his son with his high pitched voice very strange and I think people need to question why he has this little androgynous little kid don't ask don't tell we don't know what the fuck it is a pat little kid whose kid is it and why'd you put the little kid in there? Trying to sell coloring books. So this is how he gets you. He gets you to fund all his shit. Puts his uh, <clears throat> microphone check back in theaters. Keep talking about, yeah, go back to theaters. I ain't going to no theater if you're going to charge $29. I ain't, fuck kind of movie. I, look, I ain't paying no $29 for a movie and you got a Blu-ray that's $29. Just buy the Blu-ray. Don't go to the fucking theater if you want to buy the Blu-ray. I ain't even spending 29 on a 4K disc. Because I just bought this Beverly Hills Cop 1 on 4K. Amazon had that for 950. It looked like a rewrap. You know, one of those rewrapped Amazon specials. And I hope this Malcolm X I get back ain't going to be no rewrap shit. But it's hard for them to rewrap that shit in that kind of case, though. Because Amazon, they do that shit sometimes. And I only tolerate the shit because the shit was nine fucking dollars for 4K. And I gotta admit, I wasn't really trying to get Beverly Hills Cop, but whenever I, you know, Best Buy, they don't sell them anymore, so shit, whenever I can get a 4K for, for that kind of money, I, I'll take it. Unless it's some shit I don't want. <laughs> I mean, if nothing else, you can at least see with the 4K because sometimes I'm telling you for people who don't get the 4K there's uh, many 4K discs of movies that you've seen a million times that will blow your mind HD is cool if, but 4K it could look like you're right there depending on how the film was shot and what they did to it it, look, it could look like you're right there um, and then there's some 4K that looks good, but you know, not it doesn't pull away too much from the um, Blu-ray. That's why I started getting some of those Marvel movies that were made before Disney, the ones that I missed out on, mainly the Avengers movies. And um, you know, I didn't mind if I got that on Blu-ray or 4K. The 4K does bring out a little bit more, but it lessens the detail a little bit because they were all shot in 2K, so they had to upscale the shit. So, you know, it is what it is, but with that, I'm out.